So I'm going to show you really quickly how to make a um, how to make a synthesizer out of any sound, um, and I'm going to show you how to do this because uh, I, I you know a lot of times I have people send me questions about what what a uh, what uh, plugin can make what noise and all this really make it makes it sound very complicated, um, and I'm going to show you that make you can make a synthesizer out of literally any sound uh, using the simple. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So as you can see right here, I have a um, empty MIDI track and I have a, a two MIDI tracks actually. One has a synthesizer on it, one has nothing on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to my device browser, go to instruments right here, and just I'm going to drag the simpler from here into this MIDI track. And remember that if I drag um, the top level of this without opening the submenu, it'll just drag in a, an empty uh, one of an empty instance of the simpler or an, the impulse drum rack, whatever. And in this case, for some reason, mine loads with a kick already in it. I have no idea why it does that. I changed that somewhere and could never change it back. So now I'm going to load a sound into it. And to show that I can do it with any sound, I'm going to use this recording. waterfall okay so the, the least synthesizer sound so I'm gonna take this I'm just gonna drag it into this little um, window here so and as you can see I got it I got the um, I'm gonna close this device right now um, I got this MIDI track armed right here record armed and since I have this button um, put press right here if I play the A key it's gonna play a C because when this uh, button is is depressed it means that the computer keyboard acts as a MIDI keyboard um, just so if you're ever trying to type something in and you're getting notes instead it's probably because this is turned on so anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and hold down this A and you can see it'll start to play through this sample and the sample is really long so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna shorten the sample just really drastically short it and remember that I could um, if I click on this and, and scroll down, then it's going to make it uh, make the waveform larger. So I'm going to make it like this, and you can see the playback right there. Okay, so now it's getting shorter, but I'm going to want to just isolate a really small part. And my, what I'm trying to do here is just get one single waveform. Okay, so I'm going to keep on getting smaller. That's good. It doesn't sound very good right there at the scale. So I want to just keep on going smaller, keep on going, okay. And you can see when I start to get really small here, it starts to look more and more like a waveform I would have in a conventional synthesizer, right? Although it's a little bit more jagged. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to try just to get one or two waveforms of this. So I like to, and you know, I'm not very, I'm not super genius when it comes to this stuff, but it seems like I like to um, basically have it begin and end where the uh, waveform is crossing the the uh, horizontal line here, so that uh, it, when it's crossing zero, and see so see now I'm playing it. It just sounds like a click. And the trick to do this right now is I want this to loop just for as long as I hold down the note. So I'm gonna do this right here. The simpler has this really important button that's loop right here. And if I hold it now, you can see that it sounds like a synthesizer, right? And if I play it at the scale. I could probably even make this, and now I can mess with the sustain and release and all that stuff. I could do that all right here. So I want to lower the release, maybe I want to make the tack longer. And I can even make this shorter, I think, so it's just one. And you see, actually. So you see that it is going to change the pitch of it a little bit. So now that I've done this, now I have my my little the the basic building blocks of a synthesizer here because of all that you needed for a synthesizer is just a single oscillator. So then I would treat this simpler and rename this here as just my oscillator. And then if I and then I in some later posts I'll show you how to build a whole synthesizer off this whole thing with the filters and all that good stuff. So you don't need to go. Buy a whole new, uh, buy a whole new expensive plug-in synthesizer to do that kind of stuff. Okay, but the last thing I'm going to do, and this is really important, I think people kind of forget how to do this, and this will cause you a lot of problems, is I have to tune it. 
Because right now, if I hold down a C, I'm not sure if that note is actually a C. In fact, the chances of it being a C are pretty low, I'd say. So what I've done here is, and the reason that I want to do this is because I want to be confident that when I press a C on this in this instrument right here, my new um, my new synthesizer right here, um, I want to be pretty confident that when I press a C on this instrument, it's going to be the same as a C in this instrument. The reason I do that is just because it's going to make my life a lot easier when I'm constructing a song with this. So what I've done here is I have a loop of just a C, a middle C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the C on this new synth. You can hear it's a different pitch. See by messing with the transpose and the detune, so the transpose is going to be sort of the the big steps. The detune is going to be the smaller steps. I can get it in tune exactly, exactly in tune with this other synthesizer, and that way when I play them at the same time, That's how to make a synthesizer out of any sound, even a field recording of a stream, okay? Um, so make sure if you haven't uh, signed up for the newsletter to go ahead and sign up for the newsletter uh, because I'm gonna, I'll let you know whenever there's new tips and stuff like that um, here at the blog, okay? Have a great night. Mm -hmm.